if you look at my generation, we got out of higher learning institutions and landed onto opportunities because banks were working. Industries in the private sector was functional. And when you get employment, the banks would give you facilities. And a lot of the traffic jams, if you look at it, is caused by my generation that have, are paying loans for everything borrowed. We call it the one, two, three, four generation. One wife, two children, a three bedroom, and a four by four. I'm talking about my generation and why we may not be very helpful and why I want to ask your generation to sort out this country. We are captured in a way that we are working with debtors. We have a lot of burden on our shoulders. And we learn the status quo. It is about stability. It is about us being in the employment space and taking care of our one wives. You know, our, we went to school in groups, sending our children to to, to a group of schools, right? Repaying the mortgage for our three bedroom house and repaying the car loan for our small four by fours. And that is basically my generation and the farthest they can see their problems. When I saw our younger siblings coming out and saying, we are courageous. And we want to understand when we ask these questions. We are tribeless. And I said, yes, we have people that can deliver this country to the next level. But I want to caution you that while your mantra for partyless and leaderless was fashionable at the height of the protests, I find it the most ignorant conversation to continue going forward. This country has a shortage of leaders. It has an oversupply of dealers. It cannot take a leaderless generation to tackle the dealers. We want the morally upright, the socially upright amongst us to provide leadership. My generation's problem is that we have looked at these problems individually. When I go to the village and I meet my classmates who are not so lucky to advance, at the same time, like I did, they talk about, I have school fees. I have maternity bill, my wife. I have a sick person. I have these problems. When you look at those problems collectively, they are speaking to our failing healthcare infrastructure. They are not individual problems. When you look at those problems of fees, they are speaking to our poor educational infrastructure, challenges of quality, challenges of access, challenges of cost, and the equalities and inequalities that are in that sector. And whether the education that we are receiving and giving our young people is actually helpful in the long run. When you call yourself leaderless, I begin to worry who is going to lead the conversations for the Gunzis, the Gen Zs, and the others, so that we can say, these are our problems, and we can disagree on how to go about the solutions, but as long as you're talking about these problems, then we are the same thing. All right?
second point is about your partiness. There isn't going to be the Catholic Women Association on the ballot in 2027. There isn't going to be any chama, any scheme. What do you call it? I see a lot of young men in my estate. Uh, what are they? Skating, you know, uh, or the healthy runs and all those sorts of things. There are going to be political parties and candidates on the ballot to choose from in 2027. Politicians begin to win the next election. Immediately, the election results are declared. So, the winning or losing of 2027 began immediately on 16th of August, 2022. I want to leave you with these points. Number one, you said you are courageous. Let the courageous among you come out and begin to demand the space to offer credible, viable solutions this country requires from political parties, this country requires from alternative voices. Number two, the streets have become insecure. We have buried our friends, buried our relatives, buried our neighbors. But your generation is lucky that you must not meet physically to mobilize. There are two things that you need to do in your dialogue. Number two, number one, is that you have to come up with a very clear agenda about how to be voters in 2027. Your colleagues are taking longer time. In my generation, it was clear that you are a fourth former you are turning 18 anyway. Whether you are 17, you will be turning 18 anyway. And the majority of my age mates left high school with an identity card. Part of your championing, as you continue your dialogue online or elsewhere, you must continue confronting the idea of first, you getting your identifications. Number two, is that the conversation must go beyond that when you get an ID. There is no sufficient reason why you must get an ID and also be registered to be a voter. Finally, of all the illiterates that exist, the biggest illiterate is the one who says, I don't want politics. It was fashionable to be partyless, to be leaderless. It is ignorant to continue the mantra of partyless and leaderless. Ladies and gentlemen, you will have to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty to establish, maintain, and sustain credible alternatives to the nonsense we have so that you can be the light in the darkness and the flavor in our food. Thank you so much.